Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about section 15.3 over the opiates, or what are also known as the strong analgesics. Remember, an analgesic is a painkiller, and the mild ones work by preventing the transmission of the pain impulses to the brain, but a strong analgesic kills pain by preventing transmission of pain impulses within the brain. So they actually act on the brain, which means they may cause change in behavior or mood, so that's what makes them considered a narcotic. And again, this group of analgesics is called the opiates, and they include codeine, morphine, and heroin, which are all related to the opium um, derivatives. They all have very similar structures, and you can find those structures in the data booklet. So basically, they work because our brains have opioid receptors to which the opiates temporarily bind. And it's this binding that blocks the transmission of pain signals. So opiates really just change our perception of pain. They don't actually do anything for what's causing the pain, the inflammation or the fever, because they're acting on the brain's receptors, not at the site of the injury. So down below is a little diagram I took from your book. But basically, brain cells generally receive the pain signal, and the opiate uh, receptor sends that signal on to the next brain cell until a message can go out telling you what to do about your behavior. But with an opioid uh, receptor, if you put heroin, morphine, or codeine in there, they're going to bind to that receptor and block that transmission. So the target for strong analgesics is the brain, but getting it there is the challenge because our brains are surrounded by a highly selective membrane known as the blood-brain barrier. Think about blood is polar because it's water-based, so it readily transports other polar substances throughout the body. But the brain is surrounded by a membrane which is made of lipid or fats via nonpolar, which really restricts what can enter the brain. So much of the stuff that's commonly in your blood system does not enter into the brain, which is a good thing. So the three narcotics, if you look at their structures here, you notice that they all have an airing that be in that benzyl ring. They all have an ether, and you see that in blue here, and there's two of them, so they show them both in blue. They all have the alkenyl group, the CH2 group on there. They all have the hydroxyl, which is highlighted in kind of that purple pink, and then they all have a tertiary amine, which they've got highlighted in the orange. But what makes them different is what the other side chains or substituents are. So morphine, the one in the middle, is the main drug derived from opium, and it has two hydroxyl groups, making it polar and limiting its ability to cross into the brain. It's six times more effective given as an IV rather than orally, but even in the IV it has some issues with getting into the brain. Codeine, then, is made from morphine through what they call methylation or subbing a CH3 group for one of the OHs, and you can see that down here where the CH3 group has bumped off a hydrogen. So this hydrogen right there has been substituted with a methyl group. So it makes codeine less polar, so it's able to cross into the brain a little better, but it's also less effective at binding to the opiate receptors. So it's still an analgesic, it's still an effective painkiller, but it's not as strong a painkiller as morphine is. And then the dimorphine, dimorphine or heroin is also made from morphine, but it uses esterification to replace both OH groups with two esters, and you see those in the green there, and those happen to be ethanoate that are attached. And so this makes the dimorphine or the heroin much less polar than having the hydroxy groups there, even though there's some polarity to those, not nearly the polarity that you have with an OH group. So now heroin crosses the blood-brain barrier much more quickly and is two times more active than morphine is. So that means as you go from codeine to morphine to heroin, you see an increase in strength of the analgesic, but you also see an increase in the narcotic effect and in the side effects. And it means the tolerance and dependence for this drug also increases. So it's recommended that you start with the mild analgesic, aspirin, Advil, and if you need to, you add codeine. And so a lot of times um, after surgery, if it's a day surgery, you might get Tylenol-3. That's just Tylenol with a little codeine on it, so it's a combination of mild and strong analgesics. Morphine is usually administered in the hospital to help manage the pain. Um, that's usually used for acute, short-term, but severe pain after you have a fairly major surgery. 
One of the advantages of the strong analgesics is they don't cause bleeding in the stomach or elsewhere, but there's always a high risk of addiction and tolerance. Remember, those are slightly different. Tolerance meaning you need more of a dosage to get the same effect, and addiction meaning that you crave that drug and you go through withdrawal without it. Side effects include nausea, constipation, suppression of the cough reflex, and constriction of the pupils. And suppression of the cough reflex actually is one reason that codeine is used in cough syrups. If you have a cough that's what they call non-productive, it's not doing anything but keeping you awake, then they may give you a codeine cough syrup to suppress that cough. So the final thing to talk about with the opiates is the narcotic effect. The word narcotic means numbness or stupor. And it's, we describe narcotic drugs as those that have an effect on the brain. And so some of the narcotic effects, um, some of the effects on the brain is it dulls your sense of pain, it reduces fear and tension, it increases drowsiness or impairs your function if you're trying to do something with some motor coordination. It creates a euphoria initially, but it can quickly develop dependence, so you can't function without it. And it also develops tolerance so that, especially with heroin, very quickly your effective dose and your lethal dose are virtually the same. There's also withdrawal symptoms because of the addiction, and that includes cold sweats and anxiety. So methadone is an alternative analgesic that's been used to reduce cravings and lessen those symptoms of withdrawals, and has been proven as the most effective method of dealing with heroin or opiate addictions. But it's controversial since it's still a drug itself, but it's kind of considered the lesser of two evils generally.